am here. Welcome back to my channel. Thank you so much for joining in today's practice. I thought it would be neat if we work on a sequence today that builds up to forearm stand, pincha mayurasana. So again, let's just get this started. Also, as always, before we continue, do not forget to hit subscribe and like this video. All right, guys, let's get this going. We're gonna start in a sphinx posture today. So just lower the forearms towards the top of the mat, extend your legs back, press the belly down, and feel the butt cheeks kind of slide into the heel so you feel the lower back protected and, and somewhat also expansive. So you feel, again, that the muscles of the core are turning on to keep you here stable. Breathe in through the nose. And then empty out through the nose while you're looking at your arms. Notice, make sure that the shoulders are over the elbows, elbows in line with the wrists. Start to get used to into that arm position. Breathe in through the nose. Empty out, shoulders back. Breathe in again. And let it go. Again, pressing strongly through the palms. Inhale, peel the forearms away from the ground. And then lower the forearms down exactly where they came from. Then inhale, peel again. Lower them down. Always with the abdomen expansive, inhale, peel away. Exhale, lower them down. Good. Stay here. Breathe in. Just stay on the sphinx. Use the exhale to slide the inner right thigh to the ground for your half frog pose. So when you flex the right foot, you have the knee in line with the ankle. And you try to eliminate any dead space in between the ground and the ground by really extending the muscle of the inner right hip. Good. Now from here, one extra hip stretch, press the palm strongly, and help peel the forearms away from the ground. Exhale, lower the forearms down into the ground. Now just locate your right ankle. Take an inhale, peel it away, but just rolling the inner right thigh into the ground a little bit more, and then lower it down. Good, inhale, peel it away, and then lower it down. One more time, inhale, peel it away. And then roll it down. Good. Go ahead and curl the left toes. This is to help you with the following move. Take an inhale. Peel the forearms away from the ground. Use the exhale to flip the right foot outside. Left hip. In order for you to sit down. And then find the right heel to be close to the butt cheek. So the left leg is long. Inhale. Lift the left arm up. Twist and hook. Good. You can also hug the leg and let the right finger pads help you push the crown a little bit higher towards the roof, spread through the center of the heart so you know that you are lengthening from the central axis. Take an inhale and extend the right leg while you're facing the back of the mat so it meets the left leg. And use the exhale to drop the hands behind you with the fingers facing your glutes for a reverse high plank lift. Point the toes as much as you can. In this reverse high plank, use the exhale to hip dip on the right side. So you're kind of turning the body to the right side. Inhale, center. And then take it to the left while still lifting the hips super high. Inhale, center, just sit down with the exhale. Now lower the forearms down into the mat or into the ground because you're probably half, halfway out. I'll be fine. If you need the cushion, you can roll and scooch in, of course. Take an inhale, lift the hips. It's going to be a little bit shorter but still a little bit more intense and use the exhale to hip dip on the right side. Good. Inhale, center, and then take it on the left. Good. Inhale, center, just lower down like a full body stretch. Shoulders, back of the head, touches the ground, and then feel the extension maybe of the arms if you have all the space to do so. And then breathe out to bring the quads into the abdomen. <sighs> Open the arms wide into a T or cactus them, and use the exhale to drop the legs to the left and your gaze to the right for a supine twist. After that oblique work and abdominal fire that you built, you might need a little bit of a release. So let this be it because we will be adding on just a little bit more. Take an inhale, bring the legs back up through center. Good, use the exhale to just extend them towards the back of the mat. Good, this is no fancy, there's no fancy way to do this. So take a look at your left shoulder and use the inhale to roll back into your mat, helping yourself in any way you can. Good, <laughs> until you find the swing posture on the other side, nice. Now from here, press the palm strongly into the ground, breathe in. Half frog on the left side. Let the inner left thigh press down, flex the foot, so you have the inner edge of the foot kind of giving the guide for the hip line. Press through the palms. Take an inhale. Add that extra hip stretch by peeling the forearms away from the ground. 
and use the exhale to lower the forearms down, always looking for the external rotation of the upper arm. Take a look at the left ankle and use the inhale to roll the inner thigh down to pick it up and use the exhale to roll it down. Then inhale, pick it up and then roll it down. Good, last time inhale, pick it up. Exhale, roll it down. You're curling the right toe so you can help yourself with the inhale, peel the forms away and then use the exhale to flip and sit down with the left heel into the butt cheek and the right leg long. Inhale, you reach the right arm up, you twist and hook. Good. Finding your half Lord of the Fishes to really pull the crown up, opening the chest towards the opposite side and letting the finger pads help you reach the crown a little bit higher. Use the inhale to face the back of the mat and extend the left leg to meet the right. While you empty out, just drop the hands behind you with the fingers facing your glutes. Purvottanasana, reverse high plank with the inhale, lift, point the toes. This time, take it to the left when you empty out, hip dip on the left side, just to change it up a little bit. Inhale, center, and then take it to the right. Inhale, center, lower down, sit down. Also, the forearms go down. Try to bring the elbows as close as you can towards one another, and you can always scooch into the mat if you need. Inhale, lift, reverse high plank on the forearms. Take it on the left when you empty out, hip dip it. Good. Inhale, center, take it to the right. Inhale, center, lower down. Oh, good. Get that full body stretch if you really like it to just pull the arms over the head. Bring the quads in when you empty out. Open the arms wide into a T when you inhale. And then drop the legs towards the right side when you exhale. Good. Feeling that release, lower back stretch, making sure that the shoulder blade is pressing down, especially from the left side, so you can maximize the extension of the lower back. Breathe in to bring your legs back up through center. And just breathe out to extend the legs towards the back of the mat. Again, no fancy way. Just take a look at your right shoulder with the inhale and flip back into your mat with the exhale. Good. Now this time, bring the hands next to the shoulder lines like cricket arms. Bring the elbows to pull back and in. Breathe in for a little cobra stretch. Pressing the belly down, shoulders back and down. Stay here, stay here. When you empty out, just feel the pressure of the belly. Now use your following inhale to peel the hands away from the ground. And then extend them back when you empty out, but stay lifted in that cobra, almost kind of locust variation of it. Press a little bit more through the tops of the feet, bre feet breathe in. And then lower the hands down, chest, chin down too. Good. For an upward facing dog, lift just to warm up the body a little bit more. Also the quad shins away from the ground and use the exhale to flip into your downward facing dog. I'll need to adjust by walking a little bit further forward. You go ahead and do anything that you need to find the inverted V-shaped pose by just moving again the upper arms out similar to how you did in that sphinx posture, but this time the forearms are away from the mat, spread through the hands. If you need to kind of bend one knee and then the other, why not? Spread a little bit more through the butt cheeks so you find more space of the lift there. Take an inhale, look to the top of the mat and use the exhale to step or walk it forward. Find a forward fold. Good, inhale, halfway lift. Fold as much as you can. Right stand with the inhale. Reach the arms over the head. Just three traditional sunnays when you empty out. Forward fold. Inhale for a halfway lift open through the chest. Keep the hips stacking over the heels. And then fold again. Hands stay on the ground. Step it back for your breath in on the high plank. The breath out takes you on the high to low. I always lower my knees in the first one. Elbows back and in. Just so I make sure that I am connecting to a strong line in between the tailbone and crown. Finding the back bend and then lifting into downward facing dog, shooting the shoulder, uh, shoulder blades away up into the back pockets of your pants so you find more of that upper to lower back stretch that really pulls the tailbone higher. Then breathe in, look to the top, and use the exhale to step or walk it forward. Find your fold. Inhale for a halfway lift. Fold again. Rise to stand, inhale. Try to really wrap the thighs in while you're at it. You can always take a back bend in your upward salute. Exhale, forward fold. Take it down. Inhale, halfway lift. Fold again. Inhale, step it back. Find a high plank. Vinyasa takes you from high to low with the elbows back and in. Finding a really good extension in your upward facing if you hover the quads and shins and then curling toes, lifting hips, downward facing dog. One more inhale, look to the top. Exhale, step or walk it forward. You can also include a, a float. Inhale for a halfway lift. Make sure that you follow each breath with a movement fold. 
Rise, inhale, stand up, send the arms over the head with the abdomen pressing forward and then take it down, forward fold. Inhale for a halfway lift, fold again. Hands stay on the ground, step back with a breath in for a high plank, vinyasa, elbows in, slide it forward for the breath in, breath in. and then you pike it up for the breath out. Inverted V, Adho Mukha Svanasana, that is your downward facing dog, good. Take an inhale, look to the top of the mat and use the exhale to step or walk it forward. You can also float it, find a fold. Inhale for a halfway lift. Fold as much as you can. Good with the thighs and big toes touching. Inhale, rise to stand. Exhale, press the palms together. Bend the elbows and the thumbs behind the shoulder blades. Take an inhale like a back bend. Open up a little bit more from the frontal line. Exhale, chair. Bend the knees. Try to keep the arms as they were when you did that little um, forward extension. And then can you maybe bend the knees a little bit more? Find a really long line in between tailbone and shoulder blades. Good. Breathe in. Twist and hook to the right. The left elbow comes outside of the right thigh so you can really open up through the chest line. And here's the thing, the left hand is kind of pushing the right one. So you can open up a little bit more through the heart and potentially get a little bit more of the armpit to hook outside of the right thigh. Take a deep breath in. From here, just fold, hands down. Inhale, halfway lift. Fold again. Only the left foot steps back with the inhale, lower the knee, hands over the head. Use the exhale to just press the palms over the head when you come into the lunge, Anjaneyasana. Try to really press the left quad a little bit more towards the front, breathe in. Bend through the, through the elbows and send the thumbs behind the shoulder blades, almost like a back bend. Can you press the abdomen a little bit more in between the right thigh? With the exhale, twist by hooking the left forearm on top of the right thigh. And one more time, you're letting the left hand lead by pressing the right one instead of the right one being the heavy one. Double check and make sure that the right knee is still over the ankle. We're challenging this position. Taking an inhale, try to straighten the right leg as much as you can by still keeping the hook of that left elbow over the right. Can you pick up the toes also? Can you open up the heart a little bit more to the right side edge? Breathe in, come back into that twisted low lunge, breathe out, good. Also lower the hands into the ground while you're there, curl the back toes, one-legged dog with the right leg lifted, ekka para, adho mukha svanasana. Bend the knee when you open up the hip, find like the little scorpion stretch, make sure that the right armpit is back and down, good, breathe in. Knee towards the nose, but drop the shin underneath the abdomen for a supported side plank. You're opening to the left side, that means that the right hand stays down. Lift the left arm up to the roof, breathe in. Thread the left arm underneath the right armpit. Good, breathe in to lift the left arm. Use the exhale to thread it again. Inhale, lift it. Last thread, empty out. This time when you lift the left arm, also stack the head and shoulders over the hips. Use the exhale to find your gait posture. Parigasana, the left hand goes towards the left calf, right arm up and over the head. Good. Breathe in, open up like a T. Use the exhale to drop the right hand outside of the right knee and pick up the left leg away from the ground, just kind of like in line with the hip line. Keep reaching the left arm up with the inhale. You can go for a bind by bending the left knee and swinging the left arm back to go for your foot and finding a good quad stretch, even a back bend by pressing the right hip a little bit more to the long edge of the mat that you're facing right now. Breathe in to stretch the left leg and pick up the left arm again. Use the exhale to lower the left hand down and the left toes to the backage of the mat. One-legged dog one more time with the right leg lifted. Exhale, bend the knee, open up the hip. You can stay here or breathe in again and flip the dog, which is a, a common name for it is a wild thing too. So just drop the right foot to the left edge of the mat. You can swing the right arm next to the right ear with control, extending it and then feeling the hip bones rise, breathe in. Right hand down when you breathe out, take a vinyasa. So just start taking your high to low. Inhale, open the heart. And then curl the toes and lift the hips, downward facing dog. Good, we're repeating this on the other side. Take a deep breath and look towards the front. Exhale, step, walk it. You can also float it lightly to the front. Inhale, halfway. Fold again. Rise to stand with the thighs and big toes touching. Good, exhale. Press the palms together, bend the elbows, thumbs to shoulder blades. Take an inhale, look at back, bend, press the belly forward. 
Exhale, find the chair. But try to find more of a neutral spine. So the back bend is just to really ignite the core so when you sit down, you can lengthen through the tailbone almost as if the butt cheeks were to touch the back of the knees. Breathe in. Twist and hook to the left. Take the right elbow outside of the left thigh. Let the right hand press the left one so it leads and opens up. Always important to keep the knees in line with one another. Good. Stay here for an inhale. And then lower the hands forward. Fold with an exhale. Inhale, halfway lift. Exhale, find a fold. From here, only the right foot steps back when you breathe in. Lower the knee, hands up, Anjaneyasana. Use the exhale to let the palms press over the head. When you breathe in, press the belly forward and use the exhale to bend the elbows and the thumbs to come behind the shoulder blades. Good. Stay here for another breath in. And then let the right elbow hook and twist again to the left side, keeping the integrity of the legs, which is very important, and let the right hand press towards the left. Use the inhale to start extending the left leg, like a half split leg, while you're still hooked, which makes it really interesting, so don't rush it. And then point the left toes while you're still opening the heart towards the left side. Good. Take an inhale to come back into that runner's lunge with a twist. Exhale, lower the hands down. Curl the back toes, left leg lifts with the inhale. Exhale, bend the knee, open up the hip for a scorpion to get a little bit of uh, an opening on the groin. Good. Breathe in one more time. And use the exhale to bring the knee into the nose, drop it underneath the abdomen for a supported side plank facing the right long edge of the mat. Left hand down, right arm lifts with the inhale. Threaded the right hand underneath the left armpit with the exhale. <laughs> inhale, lift it back up. Thread it one more time. Inhale, lift it. Thread it for the last time. Good. Inhale, lift it, and start rising head over the shoulders, shoulders over the hips. And then use the exhale to take the gate pose, right hand to the right calf, left hand over the head, maybe towards the right foot as well. Inhale, stack. Exhale, lower the left hand outside of the left knee and pick up the right leg once you get there. Keep reaching the right arm high, breathe in. You can bend the right knee and swing the right hand back by... Just kicking the foot back into the hand and the hand into the foot to create more of a back bend motion, if you like. And a good quad stretch when you press the left hip bone that's of the leg that's touching the ground towards the long edge you're facing. Inhale to stretch the leg. Exhale to drop the right toes and the right hand facing the front of the mat. One legged dog with the inhale, left leg lifts. Exhale, bend the knee, open up the hip, scorpion, the left armpit, still pressing back and down. Good, breathe in. If you did flip it on the other side, go ahead and take it on this side as well, sending the left foot to the outside of the right edge of the mat and really lifting the hips, letting the left arm go next to the ear so you can find a really good stretch of the hip line. Breathe in. Take a high to low from here, Chaturanga Dandasana to begin, so you can connect the vinyasa when you pull the heart forward for an inhale. And then you curl the toes and lift the hips with the exhale. Downward facing dog. Take a deep breath in right here. Empty out. Before we continue flowing, we're going to do a little bit of warm up on the forearm. So use the inhale to shift forward into a high plank. Use the exhale to first lower the right forearm down, making sure that when you do so, the right elbow is in line with the left hand. Now shift weight into the left arm or hand. So you can feel that the bicep is really flexing to keep the elbow close towards the rib cage, and you have your head and hips in line with the heels as well. I know it's getting heavy on the left arm, but really try to pull it in. Breathe in. Come into a high plank when you breathe out. Press with the right hand and bring it next to the left. Good. Stay here when you breathe out and just breathe in one more time when you catch that inhale. And then pike up for a downward facing dog when you exhale. Good job. We're going to have to do this on the other side, of course. So take an inhale, hinge forward, come into a high plank. Use the exhale to lower the left forearm down. And when you do so, kind of have the left elbow in line with the right hand. And then when you come and pour weight onto the right hand or right arm, because it's not just on the hand, let's be serious, the wrist is helping you stabilize, but you are firing up the bicep, feeling the extension of the tricep to bring the elbow in, and then feeling the support of the belly pushing up to keep everything in line from head to shoulders to hips, breathe in, breathe out. Breathe in one more time, come into a high plank, pressing from the left palm and right to help you rise. 
Good, and then pike it up, downward facing dog. Go ahead. If you need to kind of do a pedaling or something in this down dog, go ahead and do so right now. Good. Once you find your inverted V and you feel sturdy and stable, breathe in, reach the right leg up and towards the roof. Use the exhale to bend the knee, open up the hip, find the scorpion, get the stretch. Good. Now again, just visualize a left forearm. Breathe in. Let it drop down in this downward facing dog. Good, inhale, peel it away one more time. Exhale, right knee to nose, pull it in round the spine. Inhale, open up the scorpion tail on the right side. Use the exhale to lower the left forearm one more time. Now this time, stay here for the breath in. You can still stay here for the breath out or flip it into the left forearm, which is a little bit more constricted. You have to press a little bit more from the outer arm to really feel the abdomen rise, good. Then one-legged dog with the inhale, press to the right palm and left then to peel the form away, lift the right leg up. Exhale, knee to nose, step the foot forward. Good, find a high lunge, bringing the arms over the head. Exhale, palms press, bend the elbows, thumbs to shoulder blades. From here, breathe in, find a back bend. Use the exhale to twist by hooking the left elbow or upper arm as much as you can over the right thigh. Good. Take a look at the right foot. Use the inhale to really face it and use the exhale to step the left foot to meet the right. Find the twisted chair and let the knees meet one another. Good. Just so we continue the same line of extension, use the breath to lift the tailbone up while you're still hooked and twisted and use the exhale to bend the knees again. Good. Take an inhale to step the left foot back where it came from. Use the exhale to stay right here in the twisted lunge. Inhale, open arm twist. That is the right arm back, left arm forward. And use the exhale to send the right hand back to the left thigh. Reach the left arm up and back, up and back, up and back. Breathe in, stay here. Warrior two. So pivot on the back heel, spread through the arm. So the right hand is pulling you forward. The left arm is pulling you back. The tailbone is going down. Vita Padrasana, B, breathe in. When you reverse the warrior, you can slide the left hand down the left thigh. You can send it behind you. Reach the right arm up and over the ear. Keep the integrity of the front leg. And then use the inhale to come back up into the warrior two. But start extending the right leg while you're there and use the exhale to come forward. Trikonasana. On this extended triangle, you can drop the right hand to the shin, foot, floor. You can use props like blocks. Try to keep the left hip up as much as you can. I kept my hand on my hip for a long time. You can also do that. Already start lifting the left arm towards the roof. Good. Breathe in right here. Breathe out. Breathe in as much as you can. Pivot on the back toe so you can drop the left hand inside of the right foot. Twisted half moon. Bend the right knee so you can so it can really help you press through the muscle to pick up the left foot and reach the right arm up. Paribrita Ardha Chandrasana. Keep extending through the left foot and open up the abdomen a little bit more to the right long edge of the mat. Breathe in. Standing splits, breathe out, lower the right hand down. Bring the torso a little bit closer towards the right shin. Maybe the nose gets closer to the ankle while you fold it the left leg higher. Breathe in and then fold all the way down. Good, inhale halfway, fold as much as you can. Breathe in for a reset, rise, reach the arms over the head. Exhale, find a fold. Inhale, halfway lift, fold one more time. Step it back with an inhale, high plank, and you can already empty out for that vinyasa. Start with a high to low, you take it to the back bend, and then to your downward facing dog. Good, again, you're finding stability through palms, feet. Use the inhale to lift the left leg up. Use the exhale to bend the knee, open up the hip. Find the scorpion tail, get the stretch. One more time, you're just imagining and finding where the right forearm is with your mind. Breathe in and then lower the right forearm down into the ground by externally rotating the upper arm. Inhale, peel it away. Exhale, knee to nose. Use the core to really bring the thigh closer to the belly. Inhale, scorpion tail one more time, open up. Exhale, lower the right forearm down. This time you keep it here, the left arm is long, breathe in. You can stay here when you empty out again or you can flip it if you did it on the other side. It's a little bit more challenging for the shoulder girdle. So make sure that you press from the bicep to really lengthen the tricep again and feel the lift through the hip bones. Breathe in. Lower the left hand down when you breathe out and start lifting the left leg back up with the inhale by peeling the, left, the right forearm away from the ground. 
and use the exhale to bring the knee into the nose so you can step the foot forward for a high lunge. Good, very kindly and gently reach the arms over the head, breathe in. Palms press together, exhale, bend the elbows, thumbs to shoulder blades, just like you did, inhale, find the back, then open up. Twist and hook with the exhale. Let the right forearm kind of press on top of the left thigh, maybe potentially you get more of the armpit and let the right hand lead as it presses the left. Then locate the left foot, breathe in. Step the right foot to meet the left, find the twisted chair. Good. Let the knees meet one another. So again, make any shifts that you need to feel stable. Inhale, lengthen the legs. So lifting the tailbone as much as you can while you're still hooked. Exhale, bend the knees like the chair. Good. Ooh, that was my mic. Inhale, step the right foot back. Find the lunge. Right now it's okay. Good. And then stay here for the exhale, maybe twisting a little bit more. Now use the inhale to open arm twist as much as you can with the right arm forward and the left arm back. Good, and then use the exhale to, we call it exhaustion. So just send the left hand down behind the right thigh, reach the right arm up and back. I don't even know if that's a word, but you know, we're sending this heart up towards the roof. Stay here, breathe in. Warrior two, warrior two. Pivot on the back heel and let the left hand extend forward while you bend the left knee on top of the ankle to really find the line of energy that spreads the hip bones for a good opening. Breathe in, reverse the warrior. Viparita Virabhadrasana, you can slide the right hand down the right calf. You can find a half bind, but keep the integrity of the front leg. Then warrior two with the inhale. Start extending your front leg. Exhale, Uttita Trikonasana, come forward. Extend the right arm up. You can place the left hand exactly where you need it, but make sure that you find a good line of extension from the center of the belly all the way to the heart. Good, from here, breathe in. Pivot on the back heel so you can press the right hand down into the ground and then lift the right leg away from the ground for your twisted half moon. So start lifting the left arm up, spreading the heart towards the left long edge of the mat and also making sure that the right leg is in line with the head as much as you can. Breathe in. Standing splits, breathe out. You can lower the hands down, both of them, to help you reach the right leg as high as you can. You can hug the left calf to help you. And then let the hamstring of the left leg Almost kind of help you rise the right leg a little bit more by engaging the quad breath in. And then fold, take it down. A good inhale, halfway lift. Fold, rise and stand. Reach the arms over the head. Exhale, forward fold. Inhale, halfway lift. Fold one more time. Step it back with the breath in. Find your high plank. And then take your high to low. Oh, it's going to get cleaner one day. <laughs> Breathe in as much as you can through the nose. And when you empty out, find a child's pose, balasana. You can choose the distancing of the knees. For this child's pose, bring the palms together like an arrow with your arms. Let the thumbs and the ball of the thumbs kind of touch one another. Breathe in. Then through the elbows, the thumbs come back behind the shoulder blades and you're just bowing the forehead down into the ground, feeling the pressure of the outer elbows. Expand the armpits away from one another and the belly down into the thighs. Breathe in through the nose. And breathe out. Remember that there's multiple options where you can Explore the sensation of the form, even though the posture is ultimately a work in progress throughout your life, because there's always something that you can discover from it. Breathe in. When you breathe out, just extend the arms forward, let the palms touch the ground. Find a regular child's pose. When you breathe in, come into a tabletop. So for your forearms stand, it, 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 it can get a little bit challenging, um, especially when you're still building the length of the triceps to really pull away the face from the ground. So a couple of options to explore. Well, first, making sure that when you drop the forearms down, the distancing of the elbows is aligned with the shoulder. So when in doubt, you can grab the elbows, and then from here, you pivot open the hands, creating this little box, just like you did in the Sphinx posture. As much as you can, from, press from the index thumb and pinky line. You curl the toes. 
you take an inhale to lift the hips and you walk your feet forward for your dolphin. Now, you can always stay here in the dolphin until you feel that you have that height when you kind of lock in the outer elbows and the skin is kind of helping you with, um, with the texture of your mat, hopefully. It, it, it kind of does help a little bit, but ultimately the core is the one that will help you walk in the feet as well as the hamstring stretches that we did. So it is kind of important to have flexibility as well in this position. Now, if you're ready to reach a leg up, then when you rise it, try to really wrap in the thigh towards the center line. So hopefully, you, whenever you lift the other heel away from the ground and you send weight into the upper arms, it's already giving you that line of energy that you need to sustain the posture and feel that you can float it up. So I'm hopeful I don't hit my head with my little mic thing, but let's give it a good try. Press through the forearms. Find the dolphin posture. Good. And then again, you can start with the leg that you feel you're strongest with, lifting it up and letting the core help you um, extend the leg a little bit higher by finding some sense of expansion from it. Now, taking a deep breath in, you might lift the left heel a little bit more if that's the foot that's touching the ground. And when you empty out, try to impulse yourself into the forearms kindly, kindly. So the right leg is not bending because if you bend the leg that's on top, then you're kicking a lot with the legs. So again, kindly send weight, press through the forearms. Don't rush the legs to get aligned. Takes a little bit of time. And then press the thighs together. And then again, let the center line push you away from the ground. Find a long line of energy of support in the forearms. Whenever you're ready to come down, come down, find a child's pose ideally. Lowering the forehead down. Getting maybe some side body stretches by walking the hands to the right side. Making sure that you feel fulfilled. So if at any time you need to pause this, pause it. Feel free to pause it. So you can connect into the sensations that you really want to explore. Use a breath in to walk the hands through center. And walking the hands to the left side. Walking the hands back up through center. Finding that child's pose. Every day that you try new things. Give yourself the opportunity to also practice compassion. To give yourself the space to grow when you try that, that you've never given it a thought before. So one more time, I thank you so much for jumping into this channel. And I hope your days are always full of light and blessings. Namaste.